So I hope you can uh, see my screen now. Um, everything is uh, live on Historiana. So uh, it's actually a new release that we did just um, in the beginning of uh, July. And basically here you can see what Historiana is at the homepage. So we are offering free resources, uh, learning activities, uh, digital tools, really for history educators um, across Europe, but also increasingly abroad. I mean, the tech internet can be accessed from everywhere. We actually also have a lot of visitors from uh, the United States and Canada. Um, but it's a free resource. And EuroCLEO is the European Association of History Educators. So our purpose is to inspire um, and support history and citizenship educators. So this is one way of doing it. So we don't have a commercial purpose. We really want to promote good history and citizenship education. And this is one way of doing it. Um, if you see here, you can, um, we made it together, uh, Historiana, also with Webtic and Use. Those are two web development companies. So we work with professional web developers. And we design um, Historiana also with Europeana. And later I will also show how Historiana and Europeana are linked uh, together. So to get the best user's experience, um, I recommend you to register and to um, get a new account. So I will just make an account. If you want to do this, you can just perhaps, uh, Alici, you can share the link to Historiana so that people can find it. And then you have to type the password. Uh, it's important that you type twice the same password. That's actually the only uh, obligation. So this one already exists. So now we register. So here you can just put your name and if you want to uh, personalize it, you can always give a, uh, I don't know, I'll just put my own image there. And here you can see uh, basically everything that you own. This is your own workspace. So there are e-learning activities. Uh, there, these are your own sources. You can upload them, but of course we have many uh, sources also available on. Historiana, uh, when you create e-learning activities, you can also find them here. Um, we have some content uh, that we made. So there are uh, the, the most basic versions are source collections, uh, and we made many together with uh, Europeana. So these are curated around a certain theme. Um, I will work now with one of the source collections that I know very well because um, uh, I developed it. So in the beginning, I would uh, recommend you to always add some sources so that you know like how to work with them. Uh, so, so that when you create an activity, um, you know, uh, then you have sources to add. So you can just, if you actually click on one of these sources, you can also uh, learn a bit more or you can zoom in. So now I think we have probably enough sources at the moment uh, to test some of the e-learning activities. Uh, it's also possible to search sources um, with some of our partners. So for example, here you can find uh, sources from the Imperial War Museum. At the moment we, uh, support only uh, images. We have um, like a wish list to also support videos in the future. And then, um, yeah, you can say, I want to add these uh, to my Historiana. And then if you go back to my Historiana and then you uh, go to my sources, you can see that we just copied what was first only on the collection of the Imperial War Museum. We use the Europeana API for that. 
and now you can actually manage it yourself. So you can also change the title, you can change the language. You can also make a copy if you, for example, want to have one source with a more extensive description or you want to use it for different purposes because one source you can, of course, use. Um, I don't know, this could be to, to learn about photography. It can also be something to learn about. Um, uh, uniforms can also be something to learn about, like uh, propaganda. So. so, and here you can see, even though this is a source from the Imperial War Museum, I can just change uh, the title uh, because, for example, I want to use this in a Dutch call. And then, um, yeah, you can uh, change the title uh, and the information yourself. Of course, you can also delete. Uh, it's also possible for, to uh, like directly search uh, Europeana. Then you search basically all the collections. Um, and here you can see the principle works the same. So, and this is now from the, the National Library of Scotland. And again, you can see that they're here in my Historiana. And here you can see actually that we also copied the whole description. Um, but the most innovative feature, I think, of um, Historiana, and which is something that we worked on quite a lot, uh, is the e-activity building. So once you have these sources, um, users of Historiana, they can uh, create, use the sources to create their own e-learning activity. So you can also um, add um, a thumbnail picture there so that it's easy to recognize. Students learn how. So if you save it, uh, it will be here under uh, my Historiana, my e-learning activities. And from there on, you can always continue to edit. So you start building uh, an e-learning activity by adding, uh, and dragging and dropping these, what we call build building blocks in this canvas. So each building block has its own functionality. So you can also, uh, you can delete the blocks, uh, you can change the order again. Um, you can add some more. And if you want to go back from this builder and sort of editing the actual building blocks, then you need to go on the top next to the title of the, uh, the e-learning activity, you go back to builder. So I want to have a question in the end and I wanna, I don't want this block. So when you are, when you are happy with the sequence of your lesson, um, then you click on the edit button. And uh, the information you see here, here is uh, what your students see. So you can, each building block, um, I mean, the functionalities are set, so each building block has its own uh, functionality. But then uh, what you actually put in there really, it can be completely tailored. So on the top, you can see view as student. So this is actually literally the information you put here is what your students see. Um, your student sees. Um, of course, you can also use different languages and different scripts. So if you want to use Cyrillic or uh, like Armenian or like anything else than Latin, um, that also works. So in that sense, um, Historiana is also much more uh, helps to remove the language barrier. Uh, there are some basic questions um, 
such as fewer students that are still in English, uh, but actually the content, the most important parts are uh, there. So uh, I'll start with um, like the sorting block. And I'm now in the teacher's view. So you just click here on uh, some sources. So you can add them to the block. Um, and in the sorting block, you can change the background. So for example, if you want to categorize, you can use this block. Then you can say, okay, which one uh, just organize the sources into groups. You can also um, use, for example, a Venn diagram when you want to have like two factors and some are like overlapping. Uh, you can also look for like a central, like which one is really the, send the most important call. So you can help to, uh, you can use the sorting block to prioritize. Um, when you view as a student, uh, you can see there's also additional information. So you can uh, zoom in uh, the sources, um, but there's also information. This information you can actually also edit. So if you want to change anything about the source. Um, you can just, um, you can change it. Okay, sorry. Um, and um, also if you want to later change the, um, for example, you want to remove one of the sources, uh, that's possible. So then you make, need to make sure you are not looking as a student but you're actually a teacher. So then you remove it from the block. And then find this right button, you can again add uh, sources. So now you can see it's double. I'll delete it. So in this case, for example, a basic question would be um, whether the sources are from the allies or from the central powers. And then, of course, the crucial question is how do you know? So at the moment, the best question, the, the best way uh, to get additional information to really get into the thinking of the student is to add uh, like a question block. Like, how did you know, you know which sources were from the central powers? Which sources were? And then if you look at that as a student, you have the big question here and they basically have to provide your answers. So it's as you would expect. Um, yeah, I think the, the sorting block is uh, pretty straightforward. One thing improvement that we're planning to make over the summer is um, that we actually want to enable you to also add labels. Uh, we felt even though you can already put it uh, the description in a text block, we felt it was easier to give the support to the students so that you have, um, if you want to say, okay, uh, divide the sources, put the sources related to the allied forces left, the one to the central powers to the right, that you just have those labels. And also uh, a feature that we heard a lot is that um, we have a lot of different backgrounds um but nevertheless there are always teachers who for example want to have like three categories well then you actually need two stripes so in the end we decided to also make it possible for teachers to uh, change their own background and to draw it so um another tool uh, that we made and this one we made in the opening up historiana uh, project actually the next three tools uh, that I will show uh, were made in this project um, with the support of the European Union from the Central Connecting Europe facility. And in this tool, you can actually also add uh, sources, but this time the focus is on the text. Yeah, so you could see that I added three sources and you can use the blue bars to switch between the sources. Um, the interactivity in this case is actually uh, related to the um, description, uh, to the text. So if I now uh, view as a student, 
students can um, they can make a selection and say okay and then add an annotation so uh, they can actually also describe like um, explain why this highlight is made and that is, I think, something that we always want to do in our tools, that we ask why. Because then you get into the deeper thinking of the students. Um, and you can use different colors. At the moment, we have like three, the same that you would have normally with highlights. Um, as a teacher, you can also make an example, uh, exemplar highlight. Uh, if you want to, for example, say, um, you, you can make an exemplar highlight, but you can also add a glossary. So if you want to, for example, um, explain, uh, give an additional um, description. So the Royal Engineers. So it's where. And if you then click as a student, you have an additional description. So especially for weaker students, or if you go back in time and you, the language is very different, uh, you can also modernize the language. Uh, in terms of piloting, it's always good. We, we tend to ask students, okay, which words do you find difficult? In the end, the students themselves are um, the best persons to explain. Um, and again, if you want to uh, like add another source, um, you can do that. And again, if you want to delete a source, uh, you can also do that. If you actually upload a PDF, you will, and it has the text recognition, then uh, all the text will be automatically here. So for some letters, uh, some museums really have, and archives are very good at that. Um, so in this case, you could, for example, say um, if it would be uh, if you work with a poem or a letter, you can ask students to highlight the parts that give them information about what was actually happening. So which which facts, which verifiable facts are mentioned. Uh, you can also check uh, whether there is bias. How do you know if you have two accounts from which side it was? So um, it really helps with the critical analysis of sources. Um, another uh, tool that we created in the opening up Historiana project is uh, compare and contrast. So, and in this case, it's actually made for, yeah, uh, more or less the analysis of um, visual sources. So, in this case, um, if you view as a student, you are also asked to, uh, you're asked to make annotations. So, and because the focus is so much on comparison, uh, the students always have to make um, like annotations in multiple sources uh, because it's not about the analysis of one source, it's really about the comparison of uh, both sources. <coughs> so, um, in this case, you can actually see this is a source from um, uh, yeah, a German machine gun crew. And here you can actually see um, that uh, like men working at a German airplane factory. So both are propaganda pictures. So you can see what similarities um, can you see. And in this case, for example, you can see, okay, like uh, men are very concentrated. So that's, I think, a, a generic feature of um, propaganda sources that everybody is really busy at work. They're either enjoying or they're hardworking. Um, you can also look, for example, uh, another annotation could be that um, people are, um, like there are like no injuries, the, like the uniforms are impeccable. So, impeccable. 
So it's another way that you, you wouldn't see people in sort of sloppy clothing uh, during, um, during a, at an official photograph. So it's another example. Uh, in this case, actually, because we viewed as a student, um, these, this is just to give an idea when you create an e-learning activity, how it will work. So these activities, uh, this is not saved. So if you actually want to add annotations um, as a teacher, and you want to just have an example, so you can say, this is the kind of un un uh, answer that I want, concentrated work. Then you can later view as a student <clears throat> and then there are already some annotations and the students can't remove those annotations. Uh, they can add more of themselves. So, and um, it's also possible to delete the annotations. Uh, if you delete the annotations on this level, all the selections are also uh, deleted. Um, if you like make an annotation here, you can adjust it to the right size. Uh, you can also delete <clears throat> them individually. Um, and of course, you can zoom in and as a teacher, you can also again change the information, uh, the title and the description. Okay, let's go to uh, the last tool that we developed in the opening up Historiana uh, project. So it's one of the more conceptual tools. In this case, we want to focus on um, connections between sources um, because the other tools were sometimes using them in, as pairs when you would, for example, compare and contrast the different sources, um, but very much also on an individual level. This is really um, uh, a tool where we can say, okay, how are sources connected? Um, let me see. So the sources that you add, um, basically you need to, um, you click that on the place where you wanna have them. So now I already have uh, in mind what I wanna develop, but you will see that it's also very easy uh, to actually uh, change them later on. So later, if you wanna move them in the right direction, you can of course do this. Uh, these are people I think at the front. You can see here that it's uh, only possible to add uh, 40 characters uh, because otherwise if you zoom in, then uh, you wouldn't be able to get all the information. So this is um, measure. You can actually per node uh, also add more sources. So let me see, we don't have so much leisure here. Well, let's assume he's just taking a swim also. If you later want to um, delete the sources, then you can also delete it there. And now you also saw how you can actually again change the source information. So in this particular source, I want to uh, basically show how propaganda is working. Propaganda. So this is one, uh, the reporting of that is always biased in the way. Uh, basically uh, in the UK, for example, it was not possible to report on the that to have photographs of dead soldiers from the Allied forces. And that of course gives a very biased picture. If uh, you have a war and only the en enemies die, I mean, that would be, uh, yeah, it's not realistic. And here you can also see with uh, like the injuries, of course, there were people injured, but they looked like they were very well treated. So the main message is our soldiers' lives matters. Um, and then there's also, there are a lot of uh, propaganda pictures that show um, like leisure, just people having fun. 
uh, during the wartime. Well, this uh, these propaganda, the way propaganda works, uh, then increases, uh, for example, the support for the arms industry. Uh, more arms industries also increases uh, the amount of soldiers fighting at the front. And that also increases the number of deaths. So again, you can see that it's always possible to readjust a bit. Um, you can choose uh, actually where the node starts. So I think it's usually um, now it's all increasing. So I think it makes sense to, to uh, let them start from the same point. It's still possible also to like delete the source. Um, so for example, here, if you want to delete that, um, then uh, it's possible then all the connections to that source are also deleted. Um, and when you later want to add a source, you can also add it to the map. You can also here upload your own sources uh, through the process. Um, and here, so I'll just recreate this. Um, as you can imagine, uh, some of these graphs can become quite complex. So we wanted students to also not get in, lost in information overload. So if you now view as a student, basically, well, it's pretty clear from the, the illustration what they have to do. So you click here on to discover immediately things are zoomed in uh, so that you are just looking at, okay, leisure, bias, propaganda. So and then gradually you learn more about uh, the rest of the sources. So you can see that um, once you clicked on the source, uh, it remains uh, revealed. And uh, so this is also why we have the discovery tool. Um, and then, students can, of course, learn more uh, about this. So if we would have, um, let's say, multiple sources in one, um, and you see there are, um, there are more soldiers here fighting at the front, so then you can all add them to the note. If um, students then want to find out, you can see that there's only information about those three sources. So uh, that's the maximum that you can put together. Um, but the idea is that students are really learning about it, uh, about those three sources then at one. And you can still give an overarching title. You can also give the, each of the individual sources. Um, well, then um, a last question could be, um, it's like avoiding, uh, over simplification. Of course, the whole idea about propaganda and um, the, the effect on the arms industry, the effect on uh, the soldiers uh, fighting at the front, it's a bit of a, a, a simplification. I mean, I think each of these connections is uh, correct, but there is, of course, much more at play. So, for example, where is popular, popular opinion? Where is um, the reporting of actual deaths? Where is the communication with the soldiers um, uh, to sending to the home front? So then you can ask students, for example, well, the map you just seen is too simple. What would you suggest? make it more realistic. Um, so now I showed like basically how the different tools are working. Uh, you can also embed videos and websites. Um, that's, I think, pretty self-explanatory. Um, so if you go, uh, if you then save it, you go to My Historiana, and there you can see the e-learning. So of course, you can delete it. I will not do that at the moment. Uh, you can always go back and edit. 
um, but then if you want to share it with students, um, then you can add tags. It's not necessary, uh, but if you want to use the same activity for multiple years, uh, then I would recommend adding a, a tag. Um, so in this case, uh, we have a Europeana group. So, and then you share this and then you get a unique link. So when you, uh, these links you can always find back on the my shares. And um, let me see if I now open uh, like a guest window and I go to, and now I just copy paste the link. Now you can see uh, what you would see if you were a student. So I just put my email and now you can see all the different steps uh, that we basically created. So in this case, I have to move and you can see here, there's a little tick box uh, that basically measures whether I have done something, whether I've been active. Um, so uh, I could uh, tell this from the uniforms. So here you can see again, you first need to make like an, uh, a highlight and then afterwards you can, um, you can submit the answer. In this case, I have to make like an annotation. In this case, I have to like uncover at least some of the blocks. And here I could say, Opinion was missing. And then when you filled in everything, then you can send things to your teacher. And then you can, you get the feedback that the e activity was submitted uh, successfully. So if I now go back to um, the account uh, where I just created the share, then uh, you can see now the answers is one on one out of one. So one person started the activity, one person completed. And then you can click on review to actually see the answers. So in this case, there's only one person giving the answers me. Uh, but then you can actually see all the different steps. So now with the sorting tool, you can actually see how I move the sources. So you can check if it's correct. Uh, you can check here the answers. Um, if you have multiple uh, people giving an answer, you can easily switch between the answers. So if you're, for example, well, I'm only interested in the answer to this particular question. I, I don't really care about uh, whether people were right or wrong about the central uh, powers and the allied forces. I just care about, so the answers here are of course, um, I think key. But at the same time, you can also see here when it's about these annotations, for example, um, you can ask more detailed questions. So one thing that's quite high on our wish list in terms of uh, future development is a stu teacher-student interaction, where you could actually here have an, another button uh, where teachers can prompt students with questions and, okay, why did you do that? And you can all see it in context. Um, so, but that's something that we will uh, develop in the future. This was uh, quite an important step for us. And here you can see again the, uh, the, the highlights that were made. Um, then uh, the sharing with others, I think is also interesting uh, to demonstrate. So the, in this case, you just, uh, you don't have to add any uh, additional uh, tags. And the link that I now um, created, I will use here. So I just switched between browsers, perhaps it went a bit quick, but uh, I'm now logged in on my personal account, not the one I just created. And again, uh, it looks the same, uh, but here it's different actually. You can see here an add to my historiana button. So that is actually what we've created. So the rest, you can see everything um, uh, that we've created. So basically teachers can decide, well, is this interesting for me? Do I want to add it to my historiana? 
If you choose you want, you can actually click on the button uh, to my historiana and then immediately you can uh, start editing. Uh, so, let me see. so here, and if you click start editing, now uh, basically you created the, your own copy of a student. So, uh, of, and immediately you can say, well, um, well let's, uh, this is a horrible example. I don't want that as uh, a teacher's annotation. I'll delete it. I think of my, my own. And if you could say, well, I simply wouldn't use the discovery tool. I can delete it. So here I save it. I go to my Historiana and then basically it's there. Um, and I'll just like quit this. And now I'm back to the account where I uh, created the activity in the first place. And now if I go back to edit, you can see the discovering tool is still there. And if I go to the comparing tool, my annotation is still there. So when you share your activity with somebody else, they can completely adjust it to their own liking, um, but it will not affect your original work. We're also looking into ways of actually cooperating, that you have two authors, uh, because perhaps you want to work together with a colleague and you don't want to all the time create new copies. Um, so that's also something we will look into in the future. Uh, but we thought this was quite an important step. Um, because so many of you are also working for um, museums and archives, I also want to uh, show this um, opportunity. So it's also possible for um, users to download existing e-learning activities because well, some teachers are very creative and they just want to work with the sources. It's always possible. Um, but we also have ready-made e-learning activities. And there basically, it just works as adding the sources to My Historiana. You click on the plus and then you go to uh, My Historiana and you can see they're there. And again, it works the same there with their own copy. Uh, you can just click on the edit screen and then it's possible to uh, to change anything that you would like to change. Um, and there are also now, that's the last feature that we made. Um, there is here um, on the partner pages, you can see that uh, partners actually have their own e-learning activities also. And um, that is something that we want to work together in the future, um, that we want to work together directly with museums and archives, uh, but also teacher training institutes, um, that they can have their own uh, examples uh, of source collections, of e-learning activities. And if we make new features that we basically want to enable you to publish the same things as Euroclio can. Um, I think that's, it uh, mainly, perhaps the only thing that I wanted to show is I didn't explain uh, very well what the tags were for. Um, I'll now actually show here. Um, I just created an activity without any of the tags um, because that will enable me to show that. Here, um, at a certain point, if you shared a lot of e-learning activities, you can imagine that it's a bit difficult to manage. Um, if you just want to go back to, for example, your own class, then you use these filters to find back what you've shared with, with, with which class or in which period. So um, that's how you use the tags. It's also, um, if you do want to, at a certain point, uh, clean up uh, because you just have to say, okay, everything from uh, last year, for example, we want to delete then you can also delete the share. Um, I think that's it uh, for the moment. Uh, if there are any questions, I will be very happy to answer them. Um, also, if there, um, I want to explain that from the new year, after the school year, we plan to have some more targeted trainings uh, on how to work with specific tools to really give examples that history teachers have used in their classroom um, together uh, with the teachers, with the students, uh, that we focus, for example, on the analysis of visual sources or how can you use comparison. Um, so 
if that is something that would be useful for you, please uh, let us know. Um, I will also type my um, email address in case you want to uh, uh, make sure you're on the list to register for those courses. Um, and the, um, then perhaps for the um, uh, museums and archives, um, if you are also interested to see, uh, to have your own page on uh, Historiana where you can publish your own e-learning activities in your own language, uh, that will be interesting. Perhaps we can have a follow-up to find out what the needs are because at the moment we're working together with Europeana uh, to, to see what the needs are for those partner pages. One of the things that uh, we really want to do in the next year is to integrate the searching of sources um, to, on the partner pages so that if you already have your collections connected to Europeana, that you can um, search those on your own page. Um, and then that will also make it easier to uh, make source collections and that all the metadata that is there in your own archive uh, or museum in your own collection, that it's uh, available. And for the rest, I would also say you can actually uh, see, um, uh, you can um, already register now for free. I saw actually uh, one question about uh, whether the platform will always be free. Um, well, the platform will all, for sure always be free for uh, teachers to use. Um, I think also, uh, and of course also for students. Uh, we will, uh, we are thinking about perhaps a premium version where you can say, if you, if you really want to have a lot of additional functions. So for example, for individuals, we're thinking if they also want to publish their activities uh, in their own personal uh, page uh, where other people can download them. Uh, but these will be like non-essential features. They will just be the nice to haves. Uh, because we also work a lot with countries where uh, incomes are actually like really low. So we want to make sure that the basic version is really good. Um, and there definitely we're not going to, uh, to add some uh, like a paywall. In terms of the, yeah, the copyright free material, that there, there is an issue, of course. Um, there has been a new copyright directive uh, from the European Union for transnational use, um, but that really only covers if you have one school uh, and one teacher who is going to make uh, share the material with their students. So in a way, um, if teachers are working with their own material uh, or material that is copyrighted, they could use it uh, to a certain extent when it's covered by that directive. Uh, but the material that we publish uh, and make available for everyone, I mean, we try to make it as accessible as possible. So we want website visitors to just find out, try out. Uh, so the material is actually cleared for copyright. We basically work with a lot of material from the public domain. Uh, we also work in partnerships with museums and archives um, and a lot of Creative Commons material so yeah, the, the resources that we um, are making, they're all uh, Creative Commons uh, free to use. There is sometimes uh, also a compromise that you have to have because when you work, for example, with very good press photos, uh, they are very difficult to clear in terms of copyright. So uh, we're also advocating in terms of that uh, for better copyright rules and uh, a more wider exception for educational use. Um, and we're trying to uh, convince um, cultural heritage institutes to also use the, in, uh, the copyright, uh, in copyright educational use permitted license, uh, which I believe we can use on, on Historiana. And in that sense, it will also be an interesting discussion with the partners, uh, because if we do enable the search of the digital collections via the Europeana API, then if it's copyrighted material, actually we can't because it's available to anyone. So we have to also find out uh, like how to apply those filters. But at least if there is material via Europeana that is licensed in a way that it can be reused then um, can also be available.
Maria Teresa asked about the privacy of students because they use their email to reply to the questions. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically, it's, um, it's one of the things that is very high on our wish list. At the moment, it's not. You can only, uh, you know from the email address what, which answer belongs, belongs to which student. So in that sense, you would be able to give feedback in person via email. Uh, but we also want to give, um, we already have the designs and the sketches that you can also do that in context. Uh, for example, we are um, thinking about uh, the scenario where one of the students is sick and couldn't go to the school. So then, because it's a lot of work also for the teachers to give this personalized feedback. Um, but it's definitely on our radar and uh, it's been a request that a lot of other teachers also had. Uh, if uh, participants can have the activity that you developed and shared, if we can share them the shareable link. Um, so yeah, you, play around. Uh, the one that we just created. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so I'll uh, share the... So basically, if you go to Historiana, you register, um, and then afterwards you just replace the URL with this uh, link, then you can uh, get the copy of uh, what I just created. And then there, there's, if you use Google Classroom, uh, I saw also a question, is it possible to share the link from, European, from Historiana? Yeah, yeah basically um, we created this that it could be integrated in any platform uh, because you have the shareable link. Uh, perhaps the only limitation would be um, that you would need to have like a link specifically for that class. Um, so if you have uh, like multiple, class yeah so you would need to make a, a separate link for each of the class um, but uh, yeah you can just say uh, in your lesson now do this activity here is the link students fill in their email address uh, well thank you all so much for um, all your interest uh, we will definitely uh, and thanks Lars for the, the recommendation at uh, the, the open educational resources for UNESCO we'll definitely look into that because I think, um, yeah, Historian itself is actually also an open educational resource. Um, if people are also interested in the web development part of it, uh, there's also, uh, we have all the documentation for uh, Historiana for web developers on uh, this site. And it's all open source. So um, in that sense, if web developers would like to join, they can also work with the code. So. Um, yeah, let's stay in touch and um, Margarita Sani, thank you very much also for sharing this with um, all your uh, colleagues from uh, the, network of, um, the, the, the Network of European Museum Organizations and um, I don't know if Isabel is there or anyone from European also thanks for, uh, the, for the cooperation and the sharing of, uh, of this webinar. So uh, I wish you now all a very good holidays and um, if you want to cooperate you have my email and uh, yeah let's get back after uh, the summer break to do some more work thank you very much <laughs>